We got it. It's right here. It's the HSD Gen 2. Since it's released several years ago, the HSD has been one of our more popular bikes in the shop. It's kind of like a smaller sibling to the GSD, which historically has been the bike to carry a lot of weight, carry two kids on the back. Turn later introduced the HSD for those that didn't need something quite as heavy duty, but this bike's actually getting to be even more heavy duty with the weight capacity going up to 187 pounds on the rear racks. I'd very much consider this a very capable cargo bike. The new updates on this bike, I think it's gonna be even more popular than it was before. All the motors have been updated to the new smart system, lots of different options there. You can have the option to have GPS tracking on some of the more premium versions. You have a belt drive on this one and some of the other models, different colors, some new accessories that are now available. They have the new captain's chair. Tara and I previously experimented with the captain's chair and really pushing its capacity, but now it seems like like they actually can accommodate a little bit more weight on here, which I can really appreciate. Gen 1 accessories seem to be compatible with this, but just a little bit heavier duty rack on here. The HSD is really popular for people that want a bike that they can share between different riders, a bike that's just kind of capable of doing more with that additional weight capacity on the rear rack and additional options to add all sorts of different accessories, including front racks can carry up to 44 pounds. Usually that's kind of reserved for just a small number of bikes that actually can handle heavier riders. Perhaps that doesn't necessarily need a bike that can carry two kids on the back. Maybe it's something that's just a little bit more capable to carry something a little bit bigger. But Turn is really a brand that listens to their customers and clearly rides the bikes themselves, really develops the bike for the lifestyle that they're living. And it really shows in the design and the way that they create things, especially in the way that they create accessories and all these sort of adaptations. And they also introduce some other new accessories like lights for the sides of their clubhouse, adding to the visibility of the bike. And actually, I think to some extent, users had made this sort of hack before adding lights to their their bikes and then they say oh we should make this like a standard option for people so some of the upgraded versions they do the gps built in although it is possible to add gps tracking out of the box it also has the ability to lock it so you can lock it with your phone or you can use one of the displays one of the unique features of turn bikes pretty much all their bikes is that it can stand up on its rear end so um, it has little feet on the back there and basically you can stand it up just like that place like New York where we are now people really appreciate having that ability to store it in in more compact ways having the ability to carry more but being a little bit lighter than the GSD this is kind of the way that you get it out of the box generally speaking people are going to outfit it with all sorts of different accessories so i definitely recommend that you consider that you check out our site check out turns website we've made videos previously on some of the different accessories we're probably overdue for making another one so if you want to see that uh, let us know maybe we'll try to do that in the future a common configuration is a child seat back here they have all sorts of different rails around here clubhouse mini a really nice bar system that goes around can carry an older kid. You can also do the captain's chair and they have this new captain's chair that can fit perhaps a, a larger rider. Something actually we've been looking at a lot lately is people that might have less abilities. Maybe they can't ride themselves, but they still want to enjoy sharing the experience of being on a bike. A lot of times people will outfit it with a double kickstand on here. That's especially helpful if you're carrying kids. If you ever are carrying kids, you're gonna wanna have bags on here or some sort of side skirt. They do make something for here. So if you're gonna carry a bigger kid, you'll wanna get like the sidekick foot rests on the side. They have the cash box, which just goes underneath the battery, just uses that extra space. And well, that's the sort of thing that if you're riding the bike daily, you're like, okay, well, I got my kid back here. I got their backpacks up here. Where's my space, you know? Like, not that my space, but you know, you could put that, put that there. I, I do wonder, does like my profile still exist on MySpace or put front racks on here? You know, you have the transporter rack is one, they have the hauler rack, and then they have some different adaptations. You want to put a basket up here, briefcase, different things like that. The handlebars folding down for storage, the handlebars can kind of really get down pretty compact. 
Sometimes people might carry in like an RV or SUV. So you have the adjustable stem up front, which gives you all sorts of adjustments for different rider heights, rider positions. You wanna be a little bit more forward. You can do so, you wanna be a little bit more upright. That's also possible. I should also note they have a different stem mast if you wanted a longer version for some taller riders. But this bike will actually fit riders from four foot 11 to upwards of six foot four. I've seen even taller riders fit it as well, but at a certain point, you might see a certain limitation with the stem and, and some of those things like that. But if you make those adaptations, you could potentially go even further. This has the dual adjustable seat post here. They have a little line here. You don't want to cross if you want to go up higher. Just make sure you're not going above that line. This specific one is the P5i, but it's also available as the S00, which is the Enviolo version. That replaces the S Plus that they previously had. That was the automatic version of the Enviolo. This one's going to be manual. It's kind of nice if people want something a little bit more sporty. The S00 is a good option. You still get the belt drive, continually variable transmission. But I chose to show this one specifically because I think that people oftentimes get a little bit confused about this five-speed hub. I really like it. It's capable of handling more torque that this performance line motor puts out. I mean, it's 75 Newton meters and some of the other internal hubs can't really handle that. I think it's gonna be a good option for a lot of people that wanna have a belt drive and save a little bit of money. I mean, the S00, another great option, but it's gonna be a little bit more expensive with some of the premium options of like the brake lights, the high beam headlight, comes with the GPS tracking installed, some different details like that, that you don't know, change the price tag a little bit. They'll also continue on with the S11, which is their speed version, with the ability to assist you up to 28 miles an hour. Although I'd say it's not like really a true 28 mile an hour bike. It's really maybe more like a 25 mile an hour bike, but still quite capable and pretty popular for those that want a little extra speed there. So really whatever stuff you want to carry, whatever you want to do with the bike, there's a good chance you can do it with this bike. I mean, the name itself is HSD Hall Stuff Daily. You can bring your dog with you. There's loads of different accessories and options for that. Now you also have some different storm protection options there. So whatever the scenario might be, it's like, say there's an app for that there's an accessory for that that's the general overview of some of the bike i will say just riding it i i really enjoy it I, i'm excited about some of the different mode options with the new smart system you have the new auto mode you can create your own mode if you want you can really fine tune the bike to work exactly how you want it. And I think personally on, on this bike, I would certainly recommend getting suspension seat post. So the models that start with an S, they come with the Cane Creek Thud Buster seat post. If you wanted to get one for yourself, you wanna look at the, the seat post diameter is 30.9. The seat post that we often recommend as well is called the Connect seat post it's got two springs in the back and you could kind of fine tune it to your own body weight but there's loads of different options there's even dropper seat posts with suspension on them pnw coast is one but enough about the general stuff i wanted to go into some of the more specifics about what makes the bike and what makes it unique and some of the components that you'll find on the bike so video for my wife and my daughter so my wife got the nbd the more compact bike. But I think this is the bike that I hope that she'll get in the future to carry my daughter. I think it'll work well for her. She's pretty short, which is, uh, this bike fits shorter riders, but enough segues, let's get into it. So checking out the front of the bike, you can see it's got this mount up here. You can mount some of their proprietary racks. You can also mount a special truss system that can mount different bags and baskets and stuff like that. The suspension fork on here is the Suntour Moby A32 cargo, specifically made to accommodate the more rigorous needs of a cargo bike. It's a coil spring fork. It does have a lockout here. And if you wanted to, you can adjust the coil just by turning this, this knob to make it firmer by turning it right or make it softer by turning it to the left. Some nice SKS fenders up front. Got a through axle. This has the Schwabi Big Apple, 20 inch by 2.15. This is the same tire that you'll find on the P10, but the S00 as well as the S11 is gonna have the Big Ben, which has just a slightly more aggressive tread on it. Not really aggressive by any means, but 
but this is just a little bit of a slicker tire where the Big Ben can maybe handle just a slightly rougher terrain. Uh, this tire size is pretty common if you wanted to put something a little bit more of like an off-road tire or whatever. It's something you could potentially consider. I would say you don't really want to do any like hardcore mountain biking, but if you ride it on dirt trails and stuff like that a lot, that's certainly a way that you can go. We'll check out the drivetrain, see one of the things that makes this particular bike a bit more unique. So starting in the rear of the bike, you can see these little protrusions here and they have little rubber end caps. That's actually what the bike will stand up on. The rear rack here is something uh, as well as the slightly redesigned frame, probably what allows it to handle a bit more weight than the previous generation. This bike actually borrows some of the frame styling from the GSD having this frame portion come here and meet up here so really the pressure on the frame coming here is is met with this and it looks kind of beefier when you compare it from the the previous version the previous version is great uh, in its own right but but it's cool that they're able to find ways to make it stronger. They also did a nice job of moving the charge port from down here on the battery to up on the down tube, which is uh, quite nice. And all the HSDs will come standard with the 545 watt hour power pack. It seems like it might be able to fit the larger battery, but I'm not sure if it'll actually work with all of their accessories. So I imagine that might be in part why they choose not to go with the 745 watt hour. But the mounts are the same, so in theory, that could work, so. For the drivetrain on this bike, it's the Shimano Nexus Inter 5E. This drivetrain is specifically made for e-bikes. A lot of times people get a little confused and say like, okay, well, why a five-speed? Why not an eight-speed? Would I rather have an eight-speed than a five-speed? But the thing about this is it's made specifically for e-bikes. It's made specifically to handle more torque. And it is actually one of Shimano's more premium hubs for e-bikes. And actually that's the same hub I chose on the NBD for, for my wife. One of the nice things about the internal hubs is you can shift from a standstill. This system's really efficient, very low maintenance, especially when paired with the belt drive as it is here. It's nice that it actually also has this cover as well beyond just the belt. You just like keep things super clean. So S00, which is the other belt drive version. I imagine it's gonna be very popular. The Enviolo Hub's a very popular option for us. That's the continually variable transmission. Really easy to shift the gears and just shift away from you. You want it easier to pedal, you shift it towards you, you want it harder to pedal. Their least expensive model is called the P10. That's gonna come with a 10 speed derailleur on it and a chain. That also has the same performance line motor. Nice sporty little bike. And for those that don't mind just to have a little bit more maintenance with, you know, cleaning, lube in the chain and stuff like that. But, you know, have more of that standard experience that many people are used to on a mountain bike and that sort of thing. And they'll have one other option. That's the high speed version. That's gonna be the S11. So that's 11 speed derailleur and that has a different motor. The only bike with a different motor on it, it has the Performance Sport 28 mile an hour top speed and 11 speed derailleur with a chain. So really sporty little bike. And I think it's uh, will be a nice option for those that want to go a little faster. Speaking of motors, we should check out uh, the motor on this guy. So the motor on here is the Bosch performance line in the smart system. Basically the smart system just has more connectivity than some of the previous versions of the Bosch system. So it has Bluetooth connectivity, it has an app and you could track all sorts of different stuff. You can also add GPS tracking to this through the connect module. It's an additional device you can add to the bike. It comes standard on the S11 as well as the S00. But this one, if you wanted to, you can add it on there. I really appreciate a lot of the different display options that they have and some of the new wires it makes it a little easier for us on the tech side run the cables through the, the frame of the bike and that sort of thing but let's check out the other side so you can see the motor a little bit better so you can get a better peek at the motor it's pretty compact it's pretty lightweight one of the nice things about the performance line motor is it's very quiet. And that's what I find in riding this as well. You really don't hear the motor as much as you do. And some of the other ones like the CX or the speed motor, you, you do hear it a little bit more, but 75 Newton meters of torque, really plenty of power. 
Bosch system works with a technology called pedal assist, basically assists you as you pedal. Now you can operate this like a normal non-electric bike and just have the system off. But once you activate the system, you could get anywhere from 60% on the lowest level of assistance to upwards to 340% on the highest level of assistance. You take one pedal revolution and the motor is giving you effectively 3.4 times on top of that. So it's pretty significant. And you could think, you know, with pairing that with a nice transmission like this has here, you can really climb up pretty much any hill. Now, the motor uses a couple different sensors, and that's one of the things that makes the Bosch pedal assist really better than most of the other ones on the market. Uh, and really, my opinion, it's the best, but I'm kind of biased. That's all that we sell, partly because I feel they're also the safest. Uh, they really just don't mess around with safety. One little detail about them, they're actually privately owned. Actually, 92% of their profits effectively go to charity. Something, it's kind of a little bit of a strange thing, but I encourage you to look up some of the history on them because from my side, uh, it's it really a very respectable company and I'm, I'm proud to be working with them. But they use three different sensors. That's one of the areas that they're very strong in as they work in many different areas. They're sensing how fast you're pedaling, how hard you're pedaling, and how fast the bike is going overall. And based on that information, it's gonna provide assistance proportionate to your input. And that's where it really provides this really seamless experience. And now with the new smart system, you have all sorts of different options, including auto mode, where you don't even have to change the assistance. And it just kind of really predicts and gives you exactly what you want. And uh, that's a really nice option. So if you've never ridden a Bosch powered bike, I really encourage you to try it because it's one of those things that really sets it apart from the rest. For the P5i as well as the P9, you're gonna see the Shimano hydraulic disc brakes with 180 millimeter rotor up front, 160 in the rear. For the S00 and the S11, that's gonna have the Magura MT4 with 180 and 160. Very slight upgrade on the brakes there, but nice options throughout the line. So you'll find the same handlebars and stem on all of the HSD models, but where it will differ a little bit is the brakes. You'll have the same controller here, but you'll have the different display. So this is the Intuvia 100 display on the S00 and the S11. Then I'll have the Kiox display. It's a color display. This is not a color display. Then you'll have the upgraded headlight as well that has a slightly more powerful light along with the high beam. Both have this really nice adjustment system, which allows you to adjust it for all different rider heights and rider positions, quite nice. Uh, this is the Shimano five-speed hub. As with all internal hubs, it, it's really nice that you can shift the gears when you're not pedaling. Really nice ergon grips on here. One thing I'll note while I'm up here, a lot of times people wanna add a mirror to their bike. One thing I should mention is that the interior di diameter of these handlebars is a little bit smaller than some others. I think one of the things is that they make the material a little bit thicker on the tubes inside of the handlebar. So as such, some of the standard mirrors won't fit here. Uh, one of the ones that we often recommend is the mirror cycle mirror, but there's other ones out there as well. It's just important to note the actual inner diameter. So you're not gonna get a bigger mirror, try to fit it and it's, it's not gonna work. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I definitely enjoyed checking this bike out and thinking about the different possibilities and the different needs that this bike might might serve. I'm looking forward to seeing more of them out there in the world, hopefully participating, putting some more of them out there through our shops. If you got any questions, you can put them in the comments. If you're local to one of our shops and we can help you, uh, please feel free to reach out. We'd be happy to and look forward to seeing you in a future video and um, enjoy the ride. Take care.